Welcome to this Digital Anarchy tutorial. We're gonna be going over how the motion settings work in Flickr Free 2.0. I'm gonna be showing this in Adobe Premiere, but it applies to all versions of Flickr Free 2.0. If you're working in Adobe Premiere or After Effects on Mac, Adobe has phased out support for OpenCL. So when you go to File, Project Settings, or Production Settings, General, you'll want to set the renderer to Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration Metal. If this is set to software only, Flickr Free won't be able to use GPU accelerated rendering. On Windows, you'll be able to set this to either CUDA or OpenCL, depending on what graphics card you have. So this is my clip with Flickr, and I'm going to apply Flickr Free from my effects panel under Digital Anarchy. And the first thing you'll usually want to do is try one of the presets. If you have rolling bands on your footage, like this clip does, start with one of the rolling bands presets. There's a time-lapse preset for time-lapse footage, slow motion for slow motion footage, and other common causes of Flickr issues. And a lot of the time the preset will just remove the Flickr without making any additional adjustments. The presets listed under faster will render faster than the presets listed under slower because the slower presets are using either the motion compensation checkbox or the slow option under detect motion. These options are helpful for removing flicker from shots that have a lot of movement either in the subject or camera movement or both, but will render more slowly. So if you're getting good results as far as flicker removal with one of the top presets, but there's a little bit too much motion blur or ghosting in the shot, then try one of the bottom ones under slower. In this example, I'm going to start with the rolling bands preset and have both motion compensation and detect motion set to off. And while this is going to do a pretty good job at removing the rolling bands, you can see this adds a ton of blur to the shot. That's because there's a lot of motion, the dog's moving, the camera's moving, and we have flicker removal, but we need to compensate for the blur. You can turn flicker free off to see what the shot should look like and then turn it back on again. And now I'm going to change detect motion from off to good fast. This option is pretty effective at removing blur and will add some render time, but not as much render time as the slow option. You can see it looks a lot better now, but if I turn flicker free off, you can still see some difference, especially on parts of the shot where the dog is moving quickly. If you see this preset dropdown changing when you change these parameters, that's because when you set the settings to exactly match one of the presets, like these are the exact rolling band settings, it automatically sets the dropdown to rolling bands. And if you set the parameters to settings that don't match one of the dropdowns, it automatically changes to custom. But once you start tweaking the settings, it doesn't matter what the dropdown is set to. Anyway, to remove more of this blur, we can turn on both detect motion and check motion compensation. And now when I toggle flicker free on and off, you can see that the moving objects in the frame look about the same. So this is adding flicker removal without adding motion blur. This option especially is gonna add a lot more flicker free render time when it's checked. But in some cases like this one, it's gonna do a much better job of removing the flicker and keeping the shot looking the way it's supposed to look. Some shots are going to look good with just detect motion, some shots are going to look good with just motion compensation, and some may need both. So look at a frame that has a lot of motion and try out different combinations to see what works. You can also set detect motion to slow if the fast setting isn't producing a good result, and as you may guess, changing from fast to slow will increase the render time, but can fix motion issues that fast can't fix. And this also opens up some advanced options that you can tweak. Setting the render dropdown to show mask displays a motion mask where all the black areas are where motion is happening. And this can be motion that's due to your subject motion or the camera moving, anything that's changing in the shot. You can adjust the mask threshold and mask radius options to modify this mask. So the show mask view gives you an idea of what these controls are actually doing. And then you can change the renderer back to deflicker and adjust the settings some more to try and get a result that matches what the original shot looks like. Usually you're gonna to wanna to keep these settings on the lower side, which is why the defaults are 5% and 10. But as with most flicker free settings, it depends on the specifics of the shot that you're working on. These options are only available when detect motion is set to slow. So if detect motion is set to fast, these aren't being applied at all. And this basically is the last thing that you wanna try if detect motion 
and motion compensation aren't getting the job done. So here are the settings that I'm using for this shot. This is what it looks like before Flicker Free. You can see the rolling bands, and this is what it looks like with Flicker Free applied with Detect Motion and Motion Compensation both on. The flicker has been removed, and the dog in the shot looks like a dog and not a blurry dog. Other flicker free settings also impact the way that motion looks, and the first one is sensitivity. You're usually going to want a higher sensitivity for a time lapse type shot where the whole screen is flickering, and a lower sensitivity for a shot where the flicker is happening in more specific areas, like with rolling bands. And lower sensitivity is going to cause more motion blur than higher sensitivity. So the lower that this is, and you usually don't want to go below three, but the lower this is, the more likely you're going to need detect motion and motion compensation. And then the time radius determines how many frames Flicker Free is looking at to try and identify the flicker. So when this is set to eight, that means Flicker Free is looking eight frames ahead of the current frame and eight frames behind the current frame. And the more frames that it's looking at, the more likely it is to cause motion blur if you have fast moving flicker, you can decrease the time radius. You may need to increase this all the way up to 10, which is the max. The higher this setting is, the more likely it is to cause motion blur, and the more likely you're gonna to need to use detect motion and motion compensation to remove the flicker without blurring the shot. So a lot of the time, the flicker free presets will do a good job fixing the shot, but if they don't, the main trick is to balance these different settings so that you get enough flicker removal without changing the way the shot looks. If you have a clip that you're having trouble finding the right settings for, you can send us a sample. 10 to 20 seconds is a good length to send us, and we can test Flickr Free on it to see if we can find settings that work. You can send clips to cs at digitalanarchy.com and download a free demo of Flickr Free or any of our other plugins at digitalanarchy.com.